grooves and tunes that you can dance to regardless the generation you find yourself in I tell you what just dance and keep singing along all through whether you're born in the 70s 80s 90s and even of today it is some music it's the power of music and very few people are blessed to be able to have this power of music and that performance we're just watching from Bob Pinodo was in VGMA 22 where he was awarded the lifetime achievement award well deserved and well honored now you can understand why it's an honor to have him join me this morning good morning now for the purposes of uh typical ghanaian morals uh and values young to old i'll say uncle bob <laughs> so good morning uncle bob good morning wow it's an honor to have you join us in the studio right. um i know i am miles apart from generation of the music but that's the reason why i want to find and tap into so much more from you um you've done an amazing job there's one question i want to ask though that's been on the on my heart since i was told about this interview okay now when you look back into when you look from where you sit now yes when you look at our music are you happy with Ghanaian music are you yeah. worried about Ghanaian music do you feel we've swayed or do you feel it's promising um well, I think well the, um I know it's a tough one to start the conversation. Yeah, but. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, in our days, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, before a music would be released on a commercial disc, yeah. at that time, I think the, we have only one station, that is GBC. Yeah. And they have to scrutinize the lyrics well before they play it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, we have so many FM stations. Mm -hmm. So... The values have dropped. Yes, yes, yes. That kind of thing. Did you find it difficult to put your music out at that time? Well, it's not an easy thing for every musician. Mm -hmm. You find it difficult to come out with your music simply because they have to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And if it's good before they sign you on, mm. you know, so it's, it's like that everywhere. Wow. Yeah. What kind of reactions were you getting with your music, you know, when you put your music out, uh, you know, for the first time and it gained public attention? Uh, what kind of reactions were you getting? 
as a young man. I'm going to come down to that age and all that time. Uh, well, every young man will be excited mm -hmm. to have his music on radio mm -hmm. or being played on radio and also uh, uh, it's, a, it's a hit mm -hmm. song. Yeah. You know. Do you recall your first, your first uh, song that was put, up, put out publicly? Well, first, uh, you know, I did two songs uh, that was released on commercial this and was played on BBC wow. at that time by uh, I think Mike Mike Egan. Mike Egan, at yeah. That, at that time, yes, and uh, you know that was uh, 1966. Wow. Yes. In Before yeah. this very one. Yeah. This album. King. Yes. Now, in bringing dates and times up, let's journey back into time. Um, to, to, to find out from you when this, this music really began in you. Uh, probably at, what, at what time in your life did you, did you start this? My deceased father uh, was a musician. Mm -hmm. And he plays piano, guitar, violins, and compose and wow. arrange and sing. So I had inspiration from him, mm -hmm. you know. What, what was growing up home like? You know, was it that the type that you are? You had classes. You were, it was you were you were you know inspired by what you used to see him do. How how was it like in growing up? Well, he's a a, a catechist, mm -hmm. and um, he composed a lot of music, and uh, at times early in the morning, run about three a.m. to four a.m. You see him on the piano, you know, playing his own music, mm. very good music, and that inspired me a lot. Mm. Yeah. How old were you at this time when you used to see him do this? I was about about nine, there about yes. Did you show any physical signs of love and music around this time in your early school days? Oh yes, yes. What were you doing? Singing along, playing instruments. Well, I, w I was interested in playing uh, pop music, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, my, you know, those days, the older men do not like uh, uh, that kind of music, you know, so uh, they, they refuse us to involve ourselves in such pop music, mm -hmm. because he, he is doing uh, Christian songs, mm -hmm. that is uh, gospel music. And I'm deviating from <laughs> that end, yeah. so he, he, he wouldn't like me to, you know. Did it become a challenge in how? In, in, in of the course, of course. Yeah. That is why I changed my name to, to Bob <laughs> Oh wow! I'm gonna come. I'm gonna please <laughs> save that for later. I'm gonna come to the to the name. Yeah. Um. So, um. You know, sometimes we talk about parents when they step in hard into ch their, their, uh, their children's career, especially when they want to take on certain things like football or music. You are seen a certain way. Was that a situation as well when you wanted to do music in your home? Of course, yes. Yes. Because as I said earlier on, uh, my, my father was a cat kissed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all what he, he did was uh, gospel music. music yeah. And so he wouldn't like his son to do uh, uh, pop music. Yeah. And that is why I was facing challenges and here yeah. and there. Yeah. When, so let, let's, I do believe this was your early primary days into probably, uh, around that time was primary school and after primary school you go into A level? You, you go, no, no, you, from primary school you go to, that is today, JSS uh, and then SS. Yeah. And, uh, actually, yes. So it was an upper, upper six form time. Yes. Let's talk about school school times as well. What were some of your what subjects were you interested most in, and what were you looking for to become if music didn't pop up? Well, uh, I was highly interested in music. That's it. Wow. In, uh, yes. Was that being taught in school? Oh yes. Did it become your main subject? You know, something you selected when you were going to school. You know, I, I was cautious because first of all. Uh, if I become so keen mm -hmm. in doing music, my deceased father will, will know. Will know. <laughs> yes, so I'm very cautious. Yeah. Uh, wow. To, to, yeah. On, on how you engaged in yeah. there. Um, yeah. it, but me, did music in any way uh, distract you know, studies? Were you the type when you probably maybe 
uh, find more interest in, <laughs> in doing music than any other course or subject I was in school? Well, that doesn't uh, distract me at all. You know, being a student, you have to concentrate yeah. on whatever you yeah. Supposed to, too. so I was doing. At what point in time then did you take on music full full time? As this is this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, I think uh, when my father died, mm. then I had a time to come out fully okay. to do music. Mm. So I joined bands like Blue Monks, okay. Republic Aces Dance Band, and that kind of yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, in, in playing with all these bands, can you share some memories, you know, times and how it was like, you know, having to partake in this full time and when you officially started doing, you know, professional music to put it out there for public consumption? Well, you know, I for one, uh, I normally do my own music, you know, right from the beginning mm -hmm. of my career. And, uh, I normally do my own music, use my music to perform everywhere, you know, so I don't like that. Can you run us through some of the classics that you, you produced back then, you know, in some of these times as we are talking about? Yeah. Um, <laughs> some of your favorite songs? Uh, uh, my first song that uh, I used to uh, sing. Mm -hmm. Do, do you any performance that I, uh, you know, perform as Peep to See, that's the title of the song. Peep? Peep to See. To See? Yeah, Peep to See, that's the title of the song. And whenever I come on stage to perform with that particular music, yeah. I see how people cheer me up. Tell me what the song was about. Oh, you know, you know Peep to See. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, if you want to know the lyrics, it's people to see. Seeing is believing. Mm -hmm. So glee and charming. Mm -hmm. People to see. Oh, what a happy sight. This happy, happy sight. And that, I mean, yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about the songs. Around this time and this era when you released the song, who were some of the other artists you know, that were also in full time music business that you probably looked up to or wished to collaborate or, you know, or had aspirations to work with? Talking about the inspiration that I had from others or what? Yes, so I mean during this time, this era, some of the other musicians that were also actively in music that, you know, um, look forward to either doing collaborations with or? Uh, well, a few artists, mm -hmm. uh, I always mentioned a certain leader, I have not seen him, her before, but uh, the song that he sang was very good and it's called uh, Eradicasa or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that lady. But the way he sang, mm. she sang that song was very, very impressive to me. Mm -hmm. And the upcoming musician like Kofi Kato or something, mm -hmm. yeah, is also good. And uh, um, some, 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 something. Is an uh, is a police musician. So the. Uh, of Ambule and and Ko Nanampidu were they were these um, artists in your era? Of course, yes. Wow. Uh, d did you ever look forward to working, you know, with them with the opportunities? Oh, uh, Pedu was my friend mm. uh, right from the commencement of my career, mm -hmm. and uh, Ambule also. We all were in uh, 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 one company, Esibons. Mm. We were on the one management, so oh. oh yes, so we we, we had a, a band called Apeja Show Band, mm -hmm. and we were all in that particular band. Oh so, wow! Yes. Oh, that's interesting to yeah. know that you and 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 Jadiblay Ambule were all. Let's talk about a bit about Danam Pidu. Let's talk about the relationship that you have with him. Mm -hmm. You know, may his soul rest in perfect peace, and how the news hits you as well on on his on his demise. Well, uh, Nana Pedu, uh, he had Nana Ampedu, I think uh, it was 1969, thereabout, when uh, we had a competition at the Art Council okay. of Ghana. And then uh, 
but then he had already come out with the, uh, a song entitled uh, OBTA. Mm -hmm. And he had a lot of uh, that series of uh, songs, you know, pertaining to animals and uh, mm -hmm. stories and that. And so he, he brought uh, his instrument to use for that particular competition. Mm -hmm. And we were told to compose, uh, is it uh, Amponsan? The Amponsan or something like that. Okay. Yeah. As a competition. And a lot of musicians participated in that. Then uh, the way he played his, and I think because he brought his uh, instruments to, he was uh, you know, named Nana Ampid. Mm -hmm. That's the that wow. yes, yeah. Wow, interesting. That's a throwback there. If you just joined in, I'm talking to legendary musician Bob Pinodo. Now let's 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 fast forward a little bit uh, from the memories of the times to the name and how it came out. You mean Bob the, the name Bob Pinodo? Yes. yes. My real name is Robert Kwiku Aiden. That's that is my real name. Okay. And you know every Robert is it's Bob. Bob. Yeah. So uh and, uh, uh, when I was in school, mm -hmm. and you know, we have entertainment, mm -hmm. second, mm -hmm. and uh, I used to play piano a lot. As I told you, that okay. uh, I was interested yeah. in with what my father was doing every morning. And so I, I also, t when in the, in the absence of my father, I used to, you know, be on the piano myself and, and all things. So. Uh, the uh, my colleagues, you know, named me Pinodo. <laughs> so well, I, I, so I, I added Bob okay. to it just to uh, let my father know that uh, this is not his son, is he, he knew mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by the name, you know. Well, he doesn't know the person, <laughs> but it's his own song, yeah. Wow. Yes. Uh, can you can you share some of the memories of your performances, some of the greatest performances you had that you know you look back at and you can never forget those times, you know, standing on stage to whichever audience where I wanted to share some of these fondest memories with us, whether in Ghana or outside the country. Well, uh, one was in Germany and one also was in Ghana. You know, uh, when I when I first performed on stage in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm a very soft-spoken person mm -hmm. and very calm. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of uh, the white people come to me and they, and they were surprised, you know, me sitting quietly, mm -hmm. thinking that maybe I mm -hmm. uh, have a stage fright or something of that sort. So when I got the mic, when they mentioned my name and I got the microphone, they were surprised. Wow. Yes. They started, you know, uh, giving me applause and giving me names, shouting and that kind of thing. Wow. Some were uh, bringing their uh, bulls, their hands, their bag, just to autograph my name and that kind of thing. Yes. Wow. Yes. So I was. I remember that very vivid year. So that was outside in Germany. You yeah. made mention of one in Ghana as well. Yes, one in Ghana. When I made my hit, that is Yesu uh, Numa Jinkwa and uh, Disco Dance. Yes, when I came, uh, uh, my boss was trying to uh, let me have a, a program or have a show in Ghana. So they were, they were, contem they were contemplating on how and where to do the show. Some were saying I should do it at Sports Stadium. Mm. And uh, some also were saying that because a lot of people want to see me and uh, especially the president and the ministers by then wanted to see me so they can't do it at Sports Stadium. So I have to do, do it as State House. State House, yeah. So that's where you know, I performed, and it was fully packed wow. at, at that time. I was just going to ask you about if you had a, have a, had a chance to meet up with uh, 
Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, and uh, it, was there ever a chance for you to have a... Oh, but weird. my time was way, 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 way past. Kwame Nkrumah, uh, uh, okay. they did the coup in 19, 24th February 1966, mm -hmm. and I had this thing 1979. 79. So there were miles past. Yes, yes. You had earned the name Showmaster, and I, I want to I want to understand how that the Showmaster of Africa, and I want to know who gave you that title, how you uh, how you earned it as well. Yes. Yeah, uh, I just said it that you know uh, when I was in Germany. Yes. You know, when I was performing. The way the audience, you know, are cheering up, and because of that, they give me a, a, a bigger place to perform, mm -hmm. and that is where they give me uh, the show master of Africa. Mm. And because of that, we had a, a record entitled uh, Talent 2000, mm -hmm. where I was the only black person among the stars in Europe. You know, the record is there. I was the only wow. black person among the stars in Europe. Wow. Yes. Did you ever experience racism, you know, as a black man and uh, coming amongst, you know, did you ever experience anything where you felt at any point you were not wanted, regardless of all that? Because we, have, we see it happening to some uh, footballers per se, you know, mm -hmm. yes, they are loved by many, but they find themselves in places where they feel they're not wanted and trying to break through your music into certain uncharted waters. Did you ever feel like you're not wanted at any point in time? Well, uh, I've not experienced that mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. but I could remember once when uh, we went to the studio and recorded two songs. And the song became a very big hit in Europe and America, in Europe, in Europe, so to speak. Then, uh, Right after the recording, we went to a place in Germany called Why Not. Why Not? Yes, Why Not. <laughs> Interesting. So we went there, and they don't allow blacks to go that, mm -hmm. to that pub. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I was going, the, the security man, you know, stopped me. Mm. But my manager, but then, went to the, the proprietor mm -hmm. to tell him that I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. We just recorded a song mm -hmm. entitled Love Your Neighbor. Mm -hmm. So the proprietor asked the security man to allow me to enter. Mm -hmm. And to my surprise, when they played the music, everybody came to the like floor that. and then danced to the music. Wow. So they were all you know, marveling that uh, how come? We don't allow black persons to be among us, but why is it that this person... And when they started dancing to the, mu the music, they all came to me. Let me... This is interesting. Let me bring us back home to Ghana. Are you... Um, do you feel there's a lot more that, as a country, with regards to our arts sector, to do for... Um, persons in the creative arts who have you know done so much you know to support to to create a foundation to create a path especially in, in areas like music you know um but especially i'm seeing this on the back of some persons who felt like uh, when our legends uh you know reach a certain point we tend to forget about them do you feel s such as well that that's the attention that we put on our legends is not enough of course yes of course yes but you know, uh, uh, as for me, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I live in Ghana, I live abroad as, as well. Okay. You know, uh, most of my songs were released in Europe and America. Mm. So I don't think much about my country. About, yeah, yeah. But still, when I came back and taught at the University of Education, uh, I realized something, I realized something that uh, most of the, uh, the older ones, mm -hmm. you know, were finding very difficult in life, mm -hmm. uh, simply because they find it difficult to get money, they find it difficult, at times you see them very wretched, and I asked myself, what happened, you know, 
because they, they were huge stars back then. Yes, yes. So, 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 so I know that uh, being a musician, first of all, you have to. It's it's like every business, yeah, or any work that uh, one does, you know. So uh, why is it that uh, you find yourself in this entangled mood, you know? Uh, you need to um, arrange certain things well yeah. in your life. But I could see that many uh, musicians were highly interested in women, drink, uh, drinks, drugs, and that kind of thing. And that brought them to that section, you know. I, for one, I'm also a musician, but I have to plan my life, you know. I'm very cautious with women also. And those are the places where yeah, uh, weakens musicians, drugs, women, and that kind of thing, you know. So if you concentrate on that kind of things, then of course your end will be like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's something that you've a point you've raised about how to man, how we manage, you know, and I think it's an advice that we, the younger generation, the newer generation here, need to really take keen interest in how we manage our lives whilst we have the, all the time and the attention. Um, you mentioned UEW, which I was going to come to as well, and your engagement there. You, you, you teach there still? Or? Yeah, I taught, I, taught the, I, taught, the... I taught dance band directing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At, at UEW? Yeah, at UEW. Uh, how, how was time, you know, how many years did you spend there? Oh, I spent 10 years. 10 years? Yes, 10 years. Wow. You know, um, uh, I came from the United States mm -hmm. to search for musicians, uh, talented musicians, mm -hmm. to go abroad to team up and form a band. Okay. Yes. But when I came, then I was asked to help the, the school. And I said, oh, how? <laughs> I didn't come for, come that. for that. But I'm a Winnebarian. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I had the second thought that why, why shouldn't I help the, the, the school? Because they want to acquire knowledge from me. You know, they want to tap my knowledge. So I have to also assist. So uh, I said, okay. That was the third time they've come to me to help, mm -hmm. you know. And you know, uh, you know, our pay in Ghana is very slim. Mm -hmm. So I like the choice of word, very slim. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Our pay in Ghana yeah. is very slim. Yes. So looking at the pay that they want to give it to me. I find it's very tiny, so uh, they, they, they came to me three times. So the third one, one of the uh, lectures called uh, Professor Miracle, mm -hmm. he, he, he took me as a friend, mm -hmm. he, he comes to my house, we chat, and then he takes me to where he's going to have a, a, a something, and then through that, then they say, oh, why don't you come and help us? Mm. And I said, okay. You went on your emotions. Yes. <laughs> and I said, okay, yeah. okay. I will yeah. come and help you. I'll come and help you. So. This, um, I mean, this is great to know. 10 years of dedicated service to the institution. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's worth every moment and every person who had a chance i'm sure to engage with you tap into a lot of knowledge now there's a very worrying conversation recently one of the dance of in ghana raised a concern about an about an experience he had outside the country where he was asked about the brand identity for ghana music and what is our best foot forward now in his reaction he said that um when he came back to ghana he said that it was about time we needed to create something to represent ghana uh, that statement well, came with a lot of reactions as people said that Ghana already has high life music as a brand identity for, for, for us when it comes to music. Um, now, the conversations are different. There's Afrobeats, there's uh, dancehall, topping the charts here, there's hip hop, and um, there's a little or less people say that, well, it's contemporary 
entire life music but there's less attention on what is owed to is owed to us as Ghanaians. do you think that we have as Ghanaians, let go of high life music uh, or is a generation so anything is allowed i mean uh, uh, i can say they are doing the wrong thing to start with mm -hmm. because if you go abroad you will see that this francophone music is taking place you know, mm -hmm. taking root, I should say. Mm -hmm. You go to America, you hear the same music. You go to UK, you hear the same music. Well, I, I didn't hear their music in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you go to uh, France, mm -hmm. you know, France, uh, UK, and America, the Francophone music is... It's penetrating. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's stupidity that we have music in Ghana. We were leading in the past. We were leading. Pele Ransom Kuti came to Ghana. Sonny Adi and all the musicians from Nigeria, they learned from us. But still, they are playing their music. All right. You know, but it seems Ghanaians have ignored authentic music that we have mm. and high life. which is high life and we are doing something else i was in california and uh, i went to a shop a record shop you know music that they want at the moment is music wow. they don't know they don't know wow they don't know so i've been told humbly I met him. I told him, look, I'm really. There's a company in, in, in a record company in America mm -hmm. who wants to, you know, release my music. But uh, they want authentic our life. When they listen to the music, they asked me to bring the guitarist from London. The guitarist was uh, an old guitarist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the state I ban in Kumasi, mm -hmm. but he was, he was living in London. It's called uh, Corsa. He played that uh, guitar on my album. So I told him that, look, I think we are, we are, we are doing foolish things. Mm. I, for one, have been composing uh, my songs in English all the time. And I don't compose music because uh, 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 I live abroad, but I concentrate on the high life rhythm. The rhythm, yeah. You know, always. If you listen to all my music, if I'm playing high life, you see that this is this is high life. Okay. You know, we ignore our music and then chasing those people' music. This. Uh, uh, I don't know how they, they call it, mm -hmm. whether rap or, uh, or the dance halls, the dance halls yeah. that kind of thing. You know, we have to concentrate on our own music. I'm coming out with a, a, a song entitled uh, Wiggle. It's Wiggle music. But it's a high life music. You know, if you listen to it, you will love it. You know, so uh, I, I'm not saying that is, uh, I've created a new beat, yeah. but still the, 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 the rhythm, the, the the rhythm is, yeah, is oh, high life music. Yeah. So this is exactly what we have to do. We have to concentrate on the high life rhythms. Mm. How, do we how do we inculcate this, this spirit into the generation that is leading and championing the Ghanaian music now? I, I, because that's, that has been the worry of how, because it's, it's as if the, the new generation have found uh, a calling into a lot of uh, contemporary westernized music mm -hmm. but so it's making us walk away from what we have hence creating a conversation mm -hmm. about uh, are we losing our brand identity how are we going to go around this to be able to let a new generation come and know that this is the rhythm that we need to grow this is our sound yeah you know um first of all you know uh, in our days yeah we record live, mm -hmm. and today they record with computer. Yeah. 
and if you listen to computer music and uh, live music, you see the difference. Mm -hmm. Very vast difference. Yeah. And first of all, uh, because of that, if you ask the upcoming musicians right now mm -hmm. to play on, on, on stage the with channel. live music, they find it difficult. Okay, I'm being told my time is up, but I will wrap it up <laughs> quickly. Yeah. Like you're saying, just I have about 60 seconds left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I want you to wrap it up for me, mm. which you're saying about the live music and mm. the recorded music. As, as you're saying, yes. I'm just left with about a minute to go, but I want to hear you. Okay, so we have to concentrate mm -hmm. on live music that will enlighten the, the upcoming musicians mm -hmm. the way high life is. Printed, yeah. You know, other than that, they will still doing the computer music, and if you make a mistake, the computer will correct it for you. And that is why they find it difficult to perform on stage. Mm. Because if you are playing the key, uh, the music on, you know, uh, in, in a, a certain key, key, you see that they deviate from the key, mm -hmm. they are singing different key. Yeah. Simply because the uh, computer assisted them to finish their product. Yeah. Well, a point is raised there worth us talking about. I really wish I could have extended this conversation, but I'm honored to have, I'm tapping into a lot of information from you this morning. And uh, well, I'm now envious of the students who had a 10 year time <laughs> with you in UEW, but it's been great having you, Uncle Bob, join us on the show this morning. Really exciting to have you. And uh, we're hoping that I'm sure we can catch you again and then we can extend this conversation about what we are doing now as opposed to what we should be doing as well. Thank you so very much. It's been a great week. My name is Jay Foley, and uh, of course, enjoy Prime uh, morning, Monday to Friday, but enjoy, enjoy Prime the whole day, the whole week. And of course, we've got great programming for you. We'll catch you same time next week on Monday. Have a great weekend.